so welcome back students so we are into our le second lecture the first lecture we saw the uh, one some of the lattice models so we saw the model how it is operated based on the flory huggins theory which is mainly applicable for polymeric systems so now in this lecture what we will do we will take it up further we will discuss another one dimensional model and that is the ising model so the current model ising model what we will cover in this lecture is is again a one dimensional lattice model i'll tell you why one dimensional because once you go for a multi dimensional it becomes more and more difficult to solve so that's why we will discuss the simplest that is the one dimensional 1d model so this model is synonymous with the model of magnetization so like a ferromagnetic substance so the way you have spin states either parallel or anti parallel so based on that this particular ising model is uh, developed then we will see an example or we can say a outcome of this model is the helix and coiled monomers so this type of uh, monomers we discussed earlier in our canonical partition function if you remember that uh, you have some of the helix monomers and some of the coiled monomers a polymer can consist both of this sort of monomers so we used one expression where we found out the probability of a particular state that is either a helix state or a coil state so we will now see where this comes from so this is the one dimensional lattice model the ising model so what happens is only the neighboring sites interact so there are two sites so only the neighboring sites we are interested in we are not interested like in the flory huggins all the neighboring sites that is we are not interested about the neighbors across the central site so it is a model for magnetization as i told you it's for a ferromagnetic substance ferromagnetic so this is based on the spin states whether they are parallel or anti parallel so you know that there are two possible spin states for each lattice point either both of them can be in the same direction or one of them is in the up direction one is in the down direction i mean you can also write two of the arrows downwards or two of the arrows upwards is basically the same configuration so i'm just writing either each of them can be up or can be down so when there is two adjacent lattice points at the same spin state we give this sign and when the neighboring states thus becomes either parallel or anti parallel so anti parallel you must be knowing that when the arrows are of opposite direction so when we have a, a interaction energy so i mean the two spin states are there so you have a interaction between them so this is quantified in terms of interaction energy so this interaction energy is given by this symbol where this symbol is the energy or the coupling parameter that may be either be positive or negative okay so when it becomes positive when both the arrows are upwards and when it becomes negative when one of them is upwards one of them downwards it doesn't matter which one is upward which one is downward because both the configuration are of similar nature so when there is adjacent spin states which are opposite or i can uh, term it anti parallel it can be indicated by either this sign or this sign both are equivalent so your energy is minus the symbol or energy change thus if i want to write down what is the energy change if i want to go from this state to this state it is minus 2 of this two times of the uh, symbol why because this state because this state so if i want to look on this state so this state we know it is already minus of this symbol and i have to subtract the interaction energy of this state and what is interaction of this state is so from going from the final state and this is the initial state final minus initial so final state so minus initial state final minus initial that will be the interaction net so final state you have minus of this symbol then subtraction of the initial state this so this becomes minus 2 into this so this is what i have written here so it becomes minus 2 into this coupling parameter so this is the way you can go from one state to this state this is very important because we will be talking about this transitions the transition of parallel to anti parallel anti parallel to parallel now you may have many such arrows 
so some of them are upward some of them downwards again then it becomes upward like that so you have to calculate the energy transition across each arrow so energy transition across each arrow will define what is the value of the coupling factor okay so we proceed ahead with this way we can write the energy of a system with n lattice points so we have suppose n lattice points and if i assume all the ticks that is the arrows there are combination of two arrows so two arrows can be either be upwards or downwards and i sum them up so this will give all possible ways and if i go across for all the n points so i have to do a summation across n lattice points so what is that expression so the expression will be then e total energy is so this is the same coupling factor which i load in the previous slide then what you have is i will give you two subscripts i and j so i and j are nothing but the ticks that is the arrows so with n lattice points will be this is the first summation and this is the second summation the second summation implies that uh, just let me die this is i this is j so it means this particular two factors are the way the arrows are oriented whether it is upwards or downwards so that is what i and j subscript means either it is upwards or downwards so it means so if i sum them up so obviously it will be a matrix of i this n plus 1 elements so you have i and j are the subscript so you keep on adding up all the possible combination so this will give you if i want to add them up this will becomes this is the same coupling factor into so what i can do is i can club them into a single summation and i can write in this manner instead of n plus 1 i go with till n so then i will be writing like this i i plus 1 okay because this value can be either plus 1 which is upwards or minus 1 so i can just reduce this double summation to a single summation okay so that's what so if i know the energy now i can define the canonical partition function this is nothing but q this is a functional number of molecules volume and temperature so you have the Boltzmann factor defined now. So Boltzmann factor is summation of exponential of the all the energies. So I put this term into exponents of exponent and exponential term. So if you do that, you will get Q of n v t. So n here represents number of sites that is sites here. So it will be all sort of configuration. So obviously. when i talk of configuration so not these are not compounds so i is configuration so this will be uh, what i do is uh, this is e to the power of minus epsilon i by kt so kt is will be coming as the denominator and the entire term will come as the numerator with a negative sign so it will be this into the coupling factor by kt then the energy term the remaining energy term will be as it is so this is just uh, i mean this if you just want to remember what we did earlier nvt is summation of all the state e to the power of minus ei by kt okay this is the expression so this is the expoltzmann summation term so ei here is this ei this term so this term we have been replacing on to the numerator that's it so we got the expression for q so obviously as i wrote you this outer sum the outer sum which is on the configuration is over all configuration it is combinations of all the spin states of the chain of lattice points okay so as i told you the chain of lattice pi all configuration means how the arrows are oriented they are clubbed so all possible combination across all possible lattice points so this is the expression for partition function but uh, we need some quantifiable parameter so bits because this is simply something which is there but we need to express in something known so how we do that let us see so for a lattice 
consisting of only two sides. So what we will do, we will first assume two sides, then three sides, then four sides, like that keep on doing it and n number of sides and finally when n approaches infinity. So that is where we assume it is a fluid, it is a bulk fluid. Okay. So if we go to 2, 3, 4 like that, then we will generalize an expression. So let us consider the simplest case as two sides. So what are the different two sides? So two sides as you know, both the sides either it can be positive this takes a positive sign when both the arrows are upwards and it may take this negative sign when both are, I mean one is upward, one is downward. So that the partition function thus becomes Q. So I have to sum up all the Boltzmann terms. So if I sum up all the Boltzmann term, this is the first term. So from the expression, if I open the bracket, that Boltzmann term takes this expression. Okay. Because uh, you have this positive term of this coupling parameter and uh, you have only one expression, so you do not have any other summation term. So you have a negative sign, it becomes only this expression. And the second expression will be because it is a negative of the coupling factor, this negative and this outer negative, they will cancel out each other. You will have e to the power of minus simply this coupling factor by kt. So we do some adjustment, mathematical adjustment. What we do, we divide and multiply by 2. So if I multiply and divide by 2 and inside the bracket, I write like this. Plus e to the power of, sorry, this is actually this will be positive. So if you remember this expression we did earlier for vibrational partition function the hyperbolic function. So, I can write in this manner, it will become 2 cos 2, 2 comes because it is a factor which is outside, 2 cos hyperbolic, then you have the expression by kt, okay, cos hyperbolic. So, it means if you know the value of this coupling parameter, you can compute the partition function for a 2 site model. So, now let us extend to three side model, what will happen? So for three sides, many things are possible. For three sides means what? There will be three arrows. So first, let us say, I have three arrows up or down, it is the same thing. Whether it is up or down, same direction, all the three arrows should possess. So now you see, what will be the interaction energy for this? See, I go from here to here, the coupling constant is this. Again, I go from here to here, the coupling constant is this. So, if I want to go from here to here and here to here, the total interaction energy will be the value of coupling factor here plus here. So, it becomes 2 times of the coupling factor, okay? 2 times of the coupling factor. In this manner, I can also have another state like this. or it is the same thing if I want to write like this. Both are equivalent, these are similar. Okay. Now you see what will be the coupling factor. Now you see you go from here to here, you have a coupling factor this, but when you go from this upward tick or upward arrow to the downwards, it will be this. So if you add these two up, it will be 0. So it will be 0. Now let us take another one states when two of the ticks are up and one is down, the middle one is down, either this or I can do like this, both are same. Again if you see from here to here, it is minus of this and from here to here, again what is it? Because the sign are changing, the arrows are going upwards, so it will be again this. So if you keep on adding these two, it becomes minus of two this coupling factor. And then the last one. I am just writing the possible combinations of the three arrows or I can also write like this, same thing. Now here what will happen, what is the interaction energy? From here to here it is this and from here to here it is this. So add up these two, again it is 0. So or 0 times whatever it is, so because it is 0. So it means interaction energy only depends on whether the adjacent sides are parallel or anti-parallel. So, I have written the total interaction energy terms for a three side model. Now, let us write the expression. So, the partition function then takes the form. 
So here Q partition function you sum up all the Boltzmann terms. So how many combination you have? You had four combination. So you will have four terms of this exponential terms. Okay. So and with the energies plus two, minus two, zero and zero. So e to the power of zero by kt you know is one. Okay, so similarly you will have two times they will be zero. So let us write those terms first. So it will be if I want to write down e to the power of this is the first term, then there will be one of this term, then one of this term because it will be zero. So I will be putting a zero, zero by kt is zero. So e to the power of zero and e to the power of zero plus then the remaining is the minus term by kt. This is a partition function. Okay. So what I will do, I will just write in this manner. So I just put it in this manner to look as if this is a square of some term. So if you see this is a square of the first a plus b. So it is a and this is b and this is 2ab. Okay, because uh, so this is a square, this is b square, this is 2ab. So this 2ab is a into b if you multiply it becomes 0. So it is 2 into e to the power of 0. So I can write this as a plus b whole square. So it is a plus b whole square. If I want to write down, it will be uh, in this manner I will write down. So I will just divide it by 2 again to make it hyperbolic function. I multiply and divide it by let us say 4 in the case. So if I want to write this something. So if this, is, if this is square, so it is A will be this, okay? And if this is square, then B will be this. With And what I will do, I will just take a 2 here. I can do that because if it is whole square, this 2 and 2, so 4 will be outside. You have 2 again outside. So entire thing is actually squared here. So it means... I am dividing and multiplying by 4. Okay. So I have reduced this expired expression into a square term. Now I can write the hyperbolic expression. So what is the hyperbolic expression? This expression looks similar to that of a two side model. So you will have the expression as 2 into cos hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic into function is the coupling constant by kt. But when the condition is this to be whole squared, right. So if you see for three side term it is square, for two side term it is 1. Likewise for four side term it will be cubed. Like that you can then for writing for a one dimensional n plus 1 lattice point. Like we, if you we keep on doing this, so we will get this expression q equals to 2 cos hyperbolic kt to the power of n okay so I, we have got an expression so because it is 2 2 square so that's why 2 to the power of n now let us see from 3 let us go to 5 that is point system and we see what is the likelihood what is the probability of finding a 5 that is point system in this state you have 5 arrows so what is the probability I get this state? So this state I can then write down as P of this. So this is only one of the state. Now I can write down so the probability will be a function thus because I have this particular term in the partition function so probability will also be a function of this term. So you know what is the probability? Probability is the exponential term of that particular state by the partition function. So partition function we have got. Now what is that numerator? Now see the numerator will be what? Because you see there is one change here, again one change here, again one change but this is minus x. Again from here to here you get minus x. Add up all those. If you add up all those x plus x minus, no, it's not x actually, it's a coupling term. The coupling term you keep on adding, you will get 0. 
So, it means whatever exponential it is raised to the power of 0, it means the numerator will be 1. Numerator will be 1. So, probability of having the particular state will be 1 upon the partition function. So, 1 upon the partition function is 2 cos hyperbolic of just now we defined to the power of n. Okay. So, this is the way you can define the probability for such a state. Now, let me ask another question. What is the probability of finding the system in any state with which has four upward arrows? I mean, four of them states in the upward direction, one is downward direction. In the previous one, we asked for a particular state. Now, we are saying what is the probability that I can get four of them to be upward arrows and one of them to be downward arrows. Now, it is something like we call a degeneracy. We have to find out what are the different possible ways I can get this type of state. Suppose you have five of the match sticks, so you can have in one of the stick that will be upside down. So, what are the different ways you can do that? You can do, do it in this way, this way, this way, this way or this way. All are equivalent. Why? Because here also one of them is downward. I can push the match stick in the downward position here or I can put it here or I can put in the second position, third position or the fourth position. So, it means if you again notice carefully, so the interaction energy for this is how much? 2 because 1, 2, 3 but here it is minus x. So, 3 into the coupling factor minus 1 of the coupling factor it becomes 2. What will be here? Again it will be 2. Why? Because this is minus fine but this is x. I am telling x but it is actually the symbol. I'm so, it is 3x minus x, again it is 2x. Now, see this particular expression. From here to here, it is minus. Then again minus. But then again, in this first the 2, the last 2, it is plus. Add up all those, you get 0. Same thing, you will also get 0. Here also, you will get 0. Because you know, this is again, if you have 1 here down, 1 here negative, again negative, again positive. So, 2 positive, 2 negative, again becomes 0, again 2 positive, 2 negative, again becomes 0. So, these are the all possible states. Now, write down the probability. Now, if you write to write down, what is the probability I can have any of these states out of all the bunch of possible states? Then your expression will be the exponential term of all these states divided by the partition function. So, the expression will be P. Now, in, in place of writing the exact probability or the arrangement, I will write probability of having four of them up and one of them down. Okay. So, I will write down what is this. So, it will be, so if you keep on adding, see you will have uh, e to the power of minus 2 by kt plus e to the power of minus 2, sorry. So, I am just putting the terms 2 of by kt, e to the power of 0 plus e to the power of 0 plus e to the power of 0, okay, by q. So, so it means I add these two, it will be 3 and if I add these two, it will be 2 e of minus 2 of kt plus 3 by q. So, I need not write q because you can write it from the previous expression. But in this case, the q will be, how many will be the q? It will be to raise to the power of the number of sides. So, this is the expression for p. Now, what will be the average energy for such a case? I will use a similar expression. So, average expression that is e bar of 4 of the arrows up and uh, one arrow down and uh, which is a function of this by kt. So, it will be 4 e to the power of minus 2x by kt by the partition function. So, in this case the partition function because it is a 5 site model it will be cos h by kt to the power of n. What will be n? n will be, because it is a 5 side model, it will be n plus 1. So, it becomes n, n is then 4. So, this is the q, this is the q. 
this q is same as this q this is the expression i'm not doing the derivation or you can write in this manner also for sometimes they write by this function just take this particular you take in the lhs as the denominator then everything remains the same so it becomes 4 e to the power of minus by 2 cos hyperbolic this is the average energy in general when we are trying to find out the terms of interaction energy between all the arrows they have developed a uh, expression how to what is the interaction energy so for a system of n plus 1 that is points the energy will be this times of n minus 2 into number of pairs of oppositely oriented arrows and minus oriented adjacent arrows so opposite arrows minus similar arrows multiplied by 2 and then n you subtract that will be the total interaction energy for a n plus 1 lattice point this is the way you get the system for n plus 1 lattice points so we we see that uh, uh, you know this edge effects what is that edge effect because you have five arrows so uh, the edge effect becomes prominent because uh, there will be many such arrows which are in the extreme ends so whether they are up and down the orientation is very similar so when but when this n is very very large number this edge effects in the lattice can be ignored in this case so if you have i can ask you then a question that if i have a chain of n plus 1 lattice sides how many are this and how many are this so we assume that out of this n plus 1 lattice sides m lattice sides are of this orientation and the remaining n plus 1 minus o m are of this getting so it means i have n plus 1 lattice sides and i say that what is the probability that m of the sides are having the arrows upward direction and the remaining n plus 1 minus m are in that downward direction so this is nothing but again the combination problem it's a number of different arrangements of the two types of site or distributing m sites among n plus 1 lattice sites so what is that expression we did it earlier also it will simply be equal to n plus 1 factorial by m factorial by n plus 1 minus m okay these are the number of ways fine so now we have come up to borrow lattice points which is n plus 1 so we went from 2 then 4 then 5 finally we came to n plus 1 so for n plus 1 is nothing what i am saying is it is the number of possible ways where i can orient certain number m in the upward direction and remaining in the downward direction so this is the number of ways i am getting but then to write all this combination is very troublesome so evaluation of the energies of each of these state is complicated it's not easy how many will you write like this because 4 3 2 i can write but how many about the n where n is 100 200 300 so it will depend because each of these why it is difficult because it will depend on the particle conformation which is up and down see if it is equal number of conformation let's say there are n number of sides and out of that half of them are up and half of them are down so there is only a one sign reversal at this area one sign reversal so in this case the interaction will be n minus 2 into this okay so n minus 2 intercoupling factor or if the n is very large in the case of liquids so it will be n into this because n is very large n minus 2 is almost equal to n we assume but it's if it is one is this extreme one is other extreme that every arrow changes direction then there will be n sign reversal so in this case because there is a sign reversal there will be the negative of the interaction energy so you keep on doing for n number of times like this you get the value as minus n into the coupling factor so in between all the configuration will have intermediate form of energies 
okay so let us see now the what are the thermodynamic properties let us see if i can obtain a value of internal energy and the specific heat capacity because now we have the expression of q in hand and if we know q in hand you can apply the same canonical partition function expression for obtaining the internal energy so that is you know it is 1 by kt square do ln of q by do t so that we will do so for large sites so i'll go with the helmholtz function first so what is the Helmholtz function? You know it is minus kT ln of Q. So it is n plus 1. Then it will be a function of now temperature comes to the picture here. I have separated out, segregated the temperature and the coupling factor here. Because there is a reason for that, I'll tell you. Because we need to see this explicitly. So it is, you know, it is, we have done it many times earlier. It is minus kT ln Q. Fine. So now you have substituted the value of Q here this be minus kt of 2 cos hyperbolic by kt to the power of n. Some mathematics adjustment I am doing, I am taking uh, so n outside minus n kt because it is, uh, I am sorry there is a log here is corrected this is minus kt because i've written it is minus kt ln q so ln of this is q this is q okay so when you have log here i can take this n outside i can as a prefactor so remaining is the logarithmic term so the logarithmic term then becomes ln of 2 cos hyperbolic by kt so i will try to right in terms of exponential so you know what is this term by kt so this is your helmholtz free function now let us write two temperature regimes that is when t approaches 0 and t approaches infinity what will be the expression looking like so when uh, you have the n plus 1 of the lattice points and t approaches infinity and all these are function of you know this coupling factor so it will be n k t l n now put t equal to 0 so in this case t is equal to infinity sorry when t infinity this becomes 0 because when this is t is infinity this becomes 0 so it will be e to the power of 0 and this will be e to the power of minus 0 so this is nothing but 2 so it will be simply minus n k t into 2 l n of 2 that's it because when t approaches infinity this term approaches 0 same with the second term so now let us write the other regime n plus 1 when t ap actual t approaches 0 then it will be minus n k t ln of this will be as it is because when t approaches 0 it will be but this will be 0 actually this will be 0 when t approaches so it will be 0 because when t approaches 0 this will become 1 upon e this is equal to 0 so finally what you get in this expression it will be simply equal to minus n into this term because uh, this term means if it is minus n k t into when ln is operated on a exponential term it becomes this upon k t so k t k t cancels what you have is only minus upon this so these are the two extremes you get one is a t approaches infinity and other is t approaches zero now let us write down what is the internal energy now so for internal energy you will be having the same expression again n plus one you will have t and a function of the coupling factor you know the expression for this it is kt square dou ln q by dou t keeping n and v as constant so you do that expression correctly you take the q value here do the logarithmic and then do the derivative i'm not doing the steps for the derivation i'm writing the final expression the final expression will be minus n into the coupling factor then the coupling this exponential terms and the numerator and denominator is 
eat to the power of so i did it in purpose so because i needed to do i will need to find out the two extremes so when the extremes is n plus 1 if i want to write down the one of the extreme as t equal to infinity so that will be because i want to apply limits to it so it will be limit minus limit t approaches infinity n into this then this same term same term so if you apply the limits for this term limit approaches 0 so this is outside you can take it outside so it will be simply be equal to 0 okay for this i'm not doing the steps in between you can do it yourself and then if i apply the limit in the other extreme t approaches 0 so this will be minus limit of t approaches 0 n into this e to the power of this plus e to the power of minus kt by so this will become minus but this will be because it is t approaches 0 this will be 1 so this this becomes minus n into the coupling factor so two extremes one is t equal to 0 as the lower temperature the internal energy will be equal to minus n into the coupling factor and when t is approaching infinity it will be close to 0. Now we can get the partial properties that is the specific heat at capacity you know this is nothing but dou u upon dou t at constant number of molecules and constraint volume. So this will be 4 nk into one upon whole square so this will be a cv so we got the all the expressions we got a we got u we got cv so now you can also get the other properties likewise so this is the expression we will be requiring for u both sides we will pay attention to this sign of this coupling parameter when, when what does it mean significance so this parameter this is positive when this parameter is positive it means this particular state has a higher energy than this state okay so it means this state having lower energy so the lowest energy state is that of alternating spins and this is the most likely state because lower energy state is always preferred so this is the lowest likely state at low temperature so so this is called the anti cooperativity it means what is this anti cooperativity and cooperative behavior anti cooperativity is that a lattice points being in one state makes it more likely that its neighbor will be in the opposite state. So because we have given a sign to the coupling factor, so it means that the other state will be the lowest state. So it is anti-cooperative. Now take the other side, when this factor is negative or we say attractive, so it means then this, the two arrows upwards will be a lower energy state than the, this state. Therefore, the lowest energy state is that of parallel spins. Now, in this case, this will be the lower energy states. So, this is called as cooperative behavior. So, in one case, you have both the arrows upwards as the lowest energy state. In another state, you have the anti-parallel arrows as the lowest energy state. So, this is called cooperativity. So, lattice point being in one state makes it more likely this neighbor will be in the same state at low temperature. But whether it is cooperative or anti cooperative behavior, energy of the system at low temperature will always be minus n into this, which we saw from the previous slide. Okay, this I used have to remember. So, this particular model, this one model which we have just now seen, the Ising model, so this, this scientist, you should know the name of this scientist, the Lars Onsager, actually solved the Ising model in two dimension. He was the first person to solve it two-dimensional. I have shown in this lecture only one-dimensional, but he solved it for two-dimensional. For this, he got a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1968. 
This is called the Ising model and he is the one who has solved it. So, Lars Onsager, you know the Onsager model, you can go through the literature and he has, the derivation is there for 2D model and till date there is no solution for the 3D model, okay. So, he is no solution for the three dimensional icing models. So, this why are we learning this model because it has some application especially again I am coming back to the polymer chains. So, we know that this simple model monomer in a chain can be either in a helix conformation or in the coil conformation. So, the interaction energy of each monomer. So, if there is a monomer here let us say this, this, this. So, say maybe coil then helix then coil or maybe again coil like that keep on going like this. So, either of the states either coiled or helix. Coiled you know these are the shape of the monomers helix shape coiled shape. So, interaction energy between each of these state is similar to what we are uh, studying here the coupling factor. So, interaction energy of each monomer is only the result of the interaction with adjacent monomers. So, if I write this epsilon H H it is the H H interaction. So, what is the suppose here is H again you have H here. So, this is the energy that is here this is equal to E H H. Similarly, this energy is E C C. So, but E C C and then you have E C H, but then E C H and E H C are equal. Okay. So, this is again E C H. So, like that you have different energies for different conformers. Now, we may ask what is the probability I observe this particular chain C C. So, how will you write that? You have to enumerate all the possible states, but in that you have to understand how many chains we have. You have to also define that. So, let us see how we can do that for a 2 monomer chain. Let us say we take a 2 monomer chain. So, I will write down in this manner for a helix conformation. So, n now becomes 2 site model, then again constraint volume and temperature. So, it will be 2 means what are the different state? It can be H H by K T one of the state, then uh, it can also be E of minus H C. I can have H H, I can have H C, I can also have C H. I can have C H, I can have C C. Anything else we can have? of the 2 monomer, 2 monomers means the 2 monomers means H H, H C, C C, C H. So, all the possible combination I have written. So, any other? No, we have all the combination. So, we can actually combine these 2 combination because both H C is equal to C H. They have the same energy. So, I can add these 2 up. So, if you do that e to the power of me H H by K T plus 2 times e e to the power of minus e of let us say I whether I write h c e to the power of minus h c of k t plus e to the power of just some correction here you have to write down e e to the power of minus e k t ok. Some simplification I have written or I can write it in this manner. E of minus H H K T plus minus plus H C by K T. Why have I again separated the variable? Now, this is same thing what I have I have said. So, it is a you know two side model. So, two side means tick upwards or downwards that way I have written again the similar type of expression we are getting. So, both of them upwards and both of them downwards what are the different uh, configuration. So, I am just separating out these factors. So, it is similar to that of the Ising model we can also apply Ising model for the evaluation of the partition function similar expression we are getting. So, obviously the probability of getting of PHH having a PHH is simply e to the power of minus. So, this will be your Q. e to the power of HH by KT by Q. 
and what is the probability I locate a chain having let us say cc. So, it will be nothing but e to the power of minus cc by kt by q and what is the probability what are the other probability I can have ch or hc whichever ch but here since there are two possible states either hc or ch so I have to write down with this two factor here e to the power of minus ch by kt. So, there are two possible pairs hh cc they are same so one and this is q. So, this is so these are the probabilities of locating the monomer chain with hh either with cc or with ch and this is comparable to the Ising model just now we read. So, this Ising model can be used for the derivation of the polymer chain for long number of chains. Here I have given for two chain that is two monomer chain likewise I can include and increase the number of chains to n. For three monomers same thing again what are the different possibilities you can have hhh or hhc or hhc or chh both are same or I can hch for three monomer chain or hcc or hcc or cch both are same then I can have chc or I can have ccc. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 possible cells. So, if this I can write down in a similar analogy what I have written for a 2 monomer chain, for a 3 monomer chain this expression becomes E of by kt plus E of minus hc by kt. Then instead of this factor I will have to square it. The same thing I have this factor here this is for 2 monomer chain it is the power of 1. So, in this is a 3 monomer chain it will have power of 2 and then I will have ex will have the same expression as before e to the power of minus hc by kt plus e to the power of minus cc by kt. But here we have power of 1 for 2 monomer for, for 3 monomer it will be n. So, 1 of 1 less so it will be 2. So, this will be the partition function. This is the way Ising model can be used for 2 monomer, 3 monomer, 4 monomer, 5 monomer like like for n number of monomers. For n monomers uh, you can also derive what will be the expression you can do it because it will be analogous expression. So, that is the utility of this Ising model. So, Ising model can help us to find the partition function for these type of polymers which have different shapes the coil shape and the helix shape ok. So, I hope you have learned this Ising model and the previous model also is very important what we have uh, we have studied that is the Flory Huggins model. Both of these models can able to describe the polymer solution or polymer mixtures. So, with this I end up this lattice based models this particular lecture and uh, from next module we will start with the liquid mixtures and because for liquid mixtures it will be different than lattice models we will be see how the liquid behave in the form of coordination shell. We will derive the radial distribution function in the future module. Thank you and again I like to tell you an emphasis please go through this particular chapter number 10 of the Sanders book where the derivation of both the Ising model and the Flory Huggins model is given in detail. Thank you. Mm -hmm.